Live in 30, 30 seconds. Okay, get ready. We're live in 10. In five, four, three, two, one. Good evening, everyone. And we're excited to be with you on again on this uh, Tuesday evening as we begin to take our drive home. We're excited that you decided to be on with us today. And what a great day it has been. And we're just thankful for that. And also, we're just uh, mindful of uh, Powell, uh, Colin Powell's family. And uh, we thank God for the life of Colin Powell. He passed away over the weekend and we're just thankful for him and all that he has done for this country and for individuals around around the world and we're happy that we have this chance to come on this evening and to share with you uh, some things that will give you an opportunity to decide whether you want to change your financial destiny and today as we begin our program we want to uh, say hello to Miss Tasha M. Dyer, Dr. Uh, Gerald uh, Rogers and Dr. Craig Bifewood, which is excited to have these business partners as we share information uh, willingly, uh, not reluctantly at all. If people just would listen, then their lives and their financial destiny would change in a matter of days. And so we're thankful for how, for this opportunity. Ms. Dyer, how are you today? I'm good. I'm good. How are you doing, Bishop? You're I'm doing excited. Pretty good. That's awesome. That's awesome. I'm actually excited to be here with you all today. Hello to our Rejoice904.com audience, our listening audience. Yes, I see you, Duval. Hello to Duval County, right? I see the I see the chat. Hello to our listening audience, no matter where you're chiming in from. So yes, does that mean that you're chiming in on Facebook, LinkedIn, right? Are you are you chiming in? on um, YouTube, wherever you're calling in from, share this information. Today is going to be life-changing, I promise you. So hello to everyone. I'm excited, as I stated once again, to be here. But share, share, share the broadcast. Change your life and someone else's. And also hello to my colleagues. Hello, hello, hello today. Mr. Rogers, how are you today? I'm absolutely wonderful. How are you doing, Bishop? I'm doing great. I like that beard is coming along like it's, you, you got all your bare spots covered up today. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> got it filled in. Yeah, it, it, it's filling in with that 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 salt going on up ahead. Uh, you know, <laughs> a little pepper. This, 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 this is a year of transformation, so I find myself yeah. tra tra transforming. Uh, man, but hey, guess we're absolutely excited to have you, our listening audience, uh, on all the social media platforms, our Rejoice904.com family. Absolutely excited. Uh, I know we have some information that's going to be valuable uh, this evening. Excited once again. Thank you, Bishop, once again for always, you know, uh, giving us uh, to be able to take some scriptures and, 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 and uh, put some uh, some feet to it. So we thank you and to my colleagues, the trade whisperer, Ms. Tasha M. Dyer and uh, the finance doctor, Dr. Craig Bifewood. And once again, our listening audience, hey, wherever you're following that on social media, uh, we definitely want to say thank you to the Rejoice 904 family. But uh, hey, do us a favor. Share this information. Like it, share it, like it, share it, like it, share it, like it, share it. Wonderful. Dr. Bifewood, how are you today? I am doing outstanding, Bishop. Thank you for always uh, being our fearless leader on this broadcast. To my esteemed colleagues, to the radio broadcasting audience, I bring you greetings from the Be Your Own Bank movement. I also, Bishop, would like to take a quick shout out uh, to General Powell and everything that he's done to this country. And if I could make a quick analogy, you know, one of the reasons why we love him beyond all of the things he's done is that he was the highest ranking African-American ever in the history of our country. And when we think about things like that, it's not about being African-American, what it's about is there being a situation where you just did not think you could reach a certain level and then you see someone do it and you know that you can. 
So whether it's Absolutely. about being a female or being wealthy, there are people on the phone, on the call, on the radio broadcast right now who did not think they could reach a certain level of wealth. But we are showing you, we're Colin Powelling as a movement, letting you know that you can reach any level of wealth and abundance that you can, even if you hadn't seen it prior to now. Absolutely. I'm just, I'm going to just put that out there. No, I'm just. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Miss Dyer, you have anything to say? Though you, you, you're the only. Uh, well, you're not the only one. Um, uh, but you're the highest ranking soldier on our on our show today. <laughs> <laughs> no, I said I knew I was gonna be wealthy. No, it was just yeah. it's a mindset thing. It really is. I was just co-signing what Doctor B said, but it's a mindset thing. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. I just didn't yeah, know but, how. <laughs> we have a scripture today uh, that we want to take a look at. I think. That, that talks about that, that possibility for everyone to uh, move beyond anxiety. We have uh, everybody's on some kind of anxiety, something, you know, anxiety. You know, our, all our children are either smoking or eating weed because they say they're angry. They're angry. They ain't, the anxiety is there. <laughs> well, you know, they got the little gummies, you know, or cookies, you know, uh, cake, or, or brownies, you know, so they're either smoking it or, or uh, eating eating weed, and so we just we just uh, we just want to talk about that a little bit as it relates to our, our economic uh, situation. And uh, Miss Dyer, you have a passage of scripture we want to take a look at. Yes, yes. Yeah. Six. You know what I want you to do, Miss Dyer? I said twenty-five. I want you to start with twenty-four. And it's safe. It's I no see. big words in there. No, that's not what it is. You got to let me pull it up. Now, if you okay. want somebody just to pull it off the top of their head, you got to talk to the visionary. No, so I gotta, I still got to open the Bible. He's he's ready. <laughs> he's, ready to give an he's ready to give an answer to the hope that lies within him. And so we was uh, excited to have him on here on here with us. We just honor and elated just to, just to be at his feet today. It says, yeah. "No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate one and love the other, or you will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Do not worry. Therefore, I tell you." Do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or what your body, what you will wear. It is life, is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. Do they not sow or reap or store away in barns? And yet your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Mm -hmm. Look at that. Look at that passage. That's a powerful passage. Now, it starts off by saying, that you can't serve two masters. Uh, Dr. Byford, my, my friend, uh, told me the other day that you can't chase two rabbits at the same time. And, and so, uh, you know, we find ourselves kind of not being able to make a decision about what it is and, and the vehicle we want to use to uh, obtain our wealth. And so we try to chase two rabbits or we try to do too many things. And so, Anxiety comes about when we can't make a decision, Ms. Dyer. You know you're working on a, in a place that, that, that it's, gonna, it's dead end. It's not going to get you where you want to be at the end of the day. And you can't make a decision to step away and do something. You can't make a decision to take, uh, take some of that money that you, uh, you do have and uh, put it in a place where you can accelerate your growth of your money. And so you find yourself back and forth because you can't make a decision. So we want to talk about some anxious situations that we put put ourselves in regarding regarding our money today. Mr. Dyer, how are you? I'm awesome. I'm awesome. Um, I think that, you know, when I, it's, it's funny how I was listening to something today. And one of the things that was stated was that your vision should give you some energy. Right. Because people always, well, how do you do this? How do you do that? But it, it, what was mentioned was vision will give you energy and it also eliminates excuses. So it's not the fact that, you know, we get anxious or we get anxiety because we, you know, just think of one of the worst things. I, I mean, I hate to hear, honestly. And it's because I used I used to say it myself. So many people say it, but I'm just living day to day. I'm taking one day at a time. You know, we, we lose focus and when we begin to just focus on the right now, we begin focusing on just what's happening today. 
we began focusing on only what's transpiring in this moment. And because of that, you know, we, we don't have vision. And so when something is, is when we get something in our path or something in, in, our, in our future, like we got opportunity because we don't have vision or because we don't have focus, that's really to me what brings that anxiety because we, we really have no direction. And so if we begin to have direction, then you'll be able to lay a path and create a path to get what you desire in life and, and to know that's what you need to obtain. And so there won't be anxiety. It won't be there. All those other things that begin to fall off. So you, you should really have a focus and understand that you want something more out of life and living day by day is not what we were designed to do. Wow, Miss Dow, that's that's so 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 on point. Uh, isn't it amazing, me and Miss Dow agree today. And, and um, <laughs> <laughs> all right, hold on, I'm right this down. I'm right this down. About <laughs> miracles when you put yourself in a position where uh, everything is uh, every you everything is emergency. We everything's got to hurry up. You can't really build. You like those people that pour concrete and then watching it dry. And take you can't you won't allow it to finish. You try to build on top of green concrete, and 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 that won't work. And so we, we can't put our make decisions and put ourselves in a hurry up panic position. And we got to allow process to take place in order for us to have the proper foundation for our financial growth. But Mr. Rogers, well, I think one of the reasons why we people have some anxiety in their life is because um, they're not in, in, a, in a position where they're controlling the outcomes. I don't think they're actually contributing to the results that they're seeking after. You know, sometimes we have a lazy feet and, and we, 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 we have these audacious dreams and, and things of that nature, but we're not, we don't find ourselves in a position where we're actively pursuing those things. And sometimes we're anxious because we know we haven't put the work in and when it's time to have those things manifest, that's where that level of anxiety comes because of, introspectively we find ourselves inspecting, uh, but we can't expect anything because we haven't inspected ourselves to put the work in. So I believe that's one of the reasons why, you know, some people find themselves anxious because once again, if a man doesn't work, he doesn't eat and you have to be willing to sow in order to reap uh, and as we've said on numerous occasions, that that's that that is God's economy, reaping and sowing. So, if you're not depositing, exactly. you, you cannot expect a withdrawal. Exactly, exactly, Doctor Byford. You know, when I think about these two masters, Bishop, I think about happiness and money. I've heard people say multiple times, "I will be happy when I get money." And what happens is that unhappiness creates an energy that impacts your ability to get to the money. So we have to reverse it. We have to be happy. And then in that happiness, we'll be in a position to come in contact with movements like ours, to come in contact with vehicles like ours, to come in contact with educators like ours. And then as we are happily going through the process and plugging in, it's easier for us to reach our goals. We've been talking about this almost the entire time of our movement, that if someone's in a position where they're not feeling good emotionally, it affects your trades. Your trades are you, your trading account is you. So let's reverse this process of waiting to be happy, which leads to anxiety, and instead choose to be happy right now and watch how much easier all of your processes will become. Absolutely. It seems like uh, Jesus is saying that this anxiety is coming from uh, there's something, as you said, that's going on on the inside of us that won't allow us to make a decision. You know, you, you somebody gives you uh, great information and you can't decide to take advantage of it. And, and, and so he says, you can't love uh, 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 God and money. And so the idea is you can't serve God and money and the idea that uh, your money ought to serve you, not you serve your money. And so we believe we have a process that allows our money to work for us and not us work for money. How about that, Mr. Darrell? 
See, I think that we it's all about a shift of focus because I think that we have to we we have to have a focus, right? You know, I think part of you know, when we look at the foundation of what people are ultimately looking for, the pursuit of happiness. Well, what is happiness, right? The pursuit people are like, I need to be motivated. What is motivation? You know, all of that's a false illusion because the reality is is you can be happy today and not happy tomorrow, but does that change the destination? You can be motivated today or not motivated tomorrow. That's something you create within yourself. I mean, even with Dr. B just saying, it's something that we have to choose to be. So the focus is not being happy. The focus is not, you know, um, the focus is not being motivated. The focus is not, it's about having a goal in life. Like, let's stop living day by day. Like, what am I focused on? What is it I'm looking to accomplish? Am I trying to have impact? Am I trying to be a change agent? Am I trying to really shift the narrative in my life and my legacy? Like, what is it you desire out of life? Because day by day, you're not accomplishing anything. And this is where anxiety comes from because we have no direction. Like, we don't know you're spinning in circles. And so the only way to get out of that circle is to understand where you're going, right? You have to have a purpose and a focus in life. And if you don't, then yes, you're gonna be anxious. You know, just think about it. You know, when we were coming up or, you know, we're in even in the military or things that I taught my children is I always told them they needed to have a de destination. What is it you want out of life? And because you, you decide you want something and you plan backwards and everything you do along that plan, everything that you do along that path is part of the plan, like where you're going. I don't care. And so that's why I often tell you feelings don't matter you know, feel, your feelings don't matter when you're along the journey because some days you feel great. Some days you don't feel great. Some days you want to be there. Some days you don't want to be there. But at the end of the day, you know where you're going and you have to accomplish that goal. Absolutely. And so uh, was you, uh, Mr. Rogers, back when you were trying to uh, teach me a better way that uh, you told me I can't get on, on the platform and chase money? Yeah, that's, well, that, that's one of the things, too, because, it, you know, because if that energy is there, then, you know, we always want to make sure people pursue the skill set. Mm -hmm. And 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 if the skill set is not present, then, you know, happening, happiness happening, you know, for me personally, you know, over the last seven days, you know, there's some th things that were happening to me personally that, uh, you know, wasn't, wasn't favorable. I mean, you know, we, we all go through things. And, and this is the thing that I think Ms. Dyer was speaking about, understanding the end destination. You know, uh, you know, sometimes we find ourselves that I know for me, um, I've been able to distinguish the difference between being happy and having joy because that joy is that thing that's on the inside of me, no matter what is happening outside of me, because I know that the end result, and then when we drop down to verse 33 in this verse, you know, as we're seeking the kingdom and his righteousness, everything that I'm in need of shall be added unto me. And the only way I'm able to endure uh, the things that I'm experiencing now is because I realize where I'm headed and I operate with the end in mind because, you know, uh, I, you know, physical challenges in my body over the last seven, seven days, you know, uh, uh, personal attacks on my, my character, my integrity. But because I know where I'm ending up, you know, there's no anxiety, there's no anxiousness, and I'm focused on the end result, you know, because I, I understand that I cannot take no thought for tomorrow, right? I don't have any control of any of those outcomes, but what I do have is the, the, the choice to believe the outcome that is going to be beneficial according to the word of God. So we all have to endure things because... Uh, we don't always feel like doing what we do, right? You know, people, you know, people look at us and, you know, think we're exempt. You know, I, you know, we have to deal with some things, <laughs> some innuendos, some, some, you know, some verbal attacks on our integrity and our character and why are we doing what we're doing. That I deal with this stuff, at, I deal with this stuff every single day, no. but I'm anxious for nothing because I know who holds my tomorrow. Yes, tell yeah. them, tell them, tell them. Absolutely. Uh, you finish out, Miss uh, Dyer. Oh, I'm a co-sign on that. I have to co-sign. I have to co-sign. You know, everybody thinks it's just glorious. And they see that they see the result, but you don't see the labor that's going through it. You know, you and don't. The, know. And, the, and the tears. Yes, and you don't heartache. know what's transpired. You don't, 
you don't know how we got here. You know, you, you don't see like even what, you know, you don't see the journey. Everybody's like, oh, the trade was for a house on there. Oh, a visionary. Mr. Rogers did, you know, somebody asked me today, oh, Mr. Rogers did this, you know, because this lady knew him from way back when, you know, before he had done anything in his life. And, you know, he, he, you know, it's because of they know you, but nobody knows the journey. Nobody knows what transpired the labor you know, doing all these calls, you know what I mean? Nobody actually knows that. And so we go through two. That's why I said happiness is relative because it's days that you don't want to get up. It's days you don't want to be, it's days, right? We're real people, but we understand the destination and we understand that 2 million families financially educated and impacted is more important than how I feel today. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you have to keep moving and, and, uh, uh, make a choice. It's a decision that you make that I'm going to pursue this information. Dr. Backwood. You know, as we continue to describe this process and give spiritual advice on how to deal with anxiety, I thought about the fact that recently a family member of mine gave me some crabs, uh, extra food that they had from an event. So, you know, individuals that actually go out and capture these crabs or they do what is called crabbing, they use buckets and they never put a top on the bucket. And the reason why they don't put a top on the bucket, radio listening audience, is because anytime one crab will begin to climb out and go to the top to escape to freedom, the other crabs will simply grab them and bring them back in. So one of the things we have to think about as we, we manage our anxiety is who are the people that are around us and what are they speaking into your life? So the, the, the testimonies that Mr. Rogers and Ms. Dyer just gave are about us speaking life, not only to other people, but also speaking life to ourselves. So I remember distinctly about 10 years ago, getting a, what I thought was a very good um, appointment to run a company. And when I told a very close family member to me, their reaction wasn't what I thought. And they said to me, well, what do you plan on accomplishing with that? And at that moment, I had one of those in the movie flashbacks. And I thought about everything that person had ever said to me. And I didn't even realize it, that they were always crab in the bucketing me. So I simply <laughs> made the decision not to share my, my testimonies with that family member anymore. But the real point I want you to walk away with, the real point that we can take to handle and manage our anxiety is sometimes it's so subtle, it's so subconscious that we begin to crab in the bucket ourselves. When you talk about what you aren't and what you can't do and what you haven't done and you've never done this and you never do that, you're doing that. So just the same way I had to recognize what this family member was saying, recognize those thoughts and those words in yourself and love on you first so that you can accomplish all you can to economic freedom. Yeah, what, is, what does that do to the energy in the room when, when you, uh, you have something that you want to share that you're excited about? And then uh, the first thing somebody that you care about uh, has to say is, is something, uh, Negative. I'm going to tell you, I remove myself. I'm not doing it with anybody, right? If I got frustrations, just like, you know, you see this? This is a pop it, right? This is my daughter, pop it. So I just sit here and I push on this. But like, I literally was, you know, in a, um, I was, I was in a, I'm going to just, let me, let me throw my family out there. I'm going to roll them right now. And I'm going to do that because. Don't throw them on the bus. Don't throw them on the bus. I'm going to because they already know. What so, <laughs> we had during COVID, we had this family chat, like this family thing where we would meet every Friday, right? And you have to be very careful when you're when you want greatness because I love them. I love them dearly, right? I love being around my family. I'm very family oriented. You know, family is very important to me. But we were on these calls and it was so much negativity. And when I would try to bring it up, it's, I would feel an attack. I'm like, let's change the subject. Oh, you're trying to tell us what we're going to talk about? Well, guess what? I started removing myself from those Friday conversations. I started removing myself from those Friday Zooms because I cannot sit in energy. And then like, I do believe in learning our history. I believe in that. But 
you know, some of the, they wanted to do like these book clubs and these weekly books and some of the things that they wanted to read is about bad relationships or, you know, slavery and how people still trying to keep us down and, you know, and I'm like, you know what, here I am. I'm, I'm like, let's read Think and Grow Rich. You know, let's let's read something that's going to shift our mindset. Let's understand the power that's inside of us. And it's like no, crickets. Nobody wants to touch that. Nobody wants to read that information. And I say, you know what? I just kindly removed myself from the situation. I kindly removed myself from it. I didn't remove myself from my family. I love them. Right. But you just going to have to watch me work. You're going to have to watch me from a distance because I'm not putting myself in those situations. So sometimes you have to, right? You, you know, you have to be your own best friend, right? You have to speak that life into yourself. And if it's anything that's, is if, if it's anything that's a negativity or a, I can, I, but, and we want to wallow in, in certain, you know, and our focus is, I mean, just think about it. What transpired during the election, the politics, people attacking me, what's going on right now with COVID? Right, people, oh, you vaccinated, you unvaccinated, right? All of these things back and forth, you know, it's negative energy. And I will not participate in that. I, I will not because I understand, like somebody just put in the chat a few minutes ago, you understand the assignment. I understand the assignment. And so I have to be very careful what I feed myself. Yeah, exactly. How about, about that, Mr. Rogers? Uh, well, most, most definitely. I mean, and, you know, even sometimes. You know, uh, even the ones who who uh, share our same last name, and sometimes you know, we all had those moments, and, and Jesus experienced it even with 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 uh, Peter. You know, Peter had the revelation that you are the Son of the Living God, and in the same sentence, he told him that he wasn't gonna finish his mission, and and he, you know, Jesus had to rebuke him. So sometimes mm -hmm. you know, we do have to be careful who we lend our ears to, and my my thing that keeps me healthy. Uh, even when um, I experience anything like that, my, my, my concept is, you know, my, my, in my mind, the loudest voice in my mind is what God says about me. And then the second voice is me being in agreement with what God has already said. And if, it, if any voices are not equal to that, then, you know, they, 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 they get kicked to the outer perimeter for a season. Wow. Out of the circle. You're not in the circle anymore. You got to get out of the circle. Yes. The circle of trust. Yeah, my, uh, the circle. <laughs> the circle of trust. The <laughs> yes. You know, the, Bishop, the four of us are really speaking truth right now. And I want to piggyback on something that uh, Trey was per se when she said, I chose not to participate, but I still love my family. So part of managing anxiety is for us to be able to change our perception of those people while it's happening. I say this all the time, people do not do and say things to you. They simply do and say things. If you suddenly disappeared off the earth, they'd still be saying the same thing. They'd still be talking the same way. So it helps us to manage our anxiety when we don't take it personal. Here's something that I share with life coaching clients sometime when they have an issue, especially with a parent or an older family member. Every single person went through a childhood and those wounds, those experiences that we went through, they impact you. So when you have an issue with a family member, just picture them as being a child crying. The, mm -hmm. the small inner child in front of them is crying out. And that's why they're angry. That's why they're saying what they're saying. We don't get attitudes with children. So sometimes when we do that, it makes it easier for us to follow the dire rule, where I will remove myself but still love you. Wait, we don't get attitudes with kids? I'm sorry. Oops, my bad. What kind of, what kind of what is that? Uh, wrong, wrong group. <laughs> I thought this was Child Care Professionals of America. <laughs> oh, Lord, oh, Lord. And so Jesus makes, uh, makes it clear that um, we have to learn to prioritize what we're doing, what we're trying to pursue. Because again, you can't chase two rabbits at the same time. One's going to go one way, one's going to go the other. And so he says, you can't serve two masters. You either hate one and love the other. And the word hate here simply means to love less. And so you will, one, one you, will, you will have a greater desire, have a greater influence on the direction that you take than the other. 
And so the struggle to prioritize what's important, uh, whether or not I want to spend spend my hundred dollars this weekend trading, or I want to spend my hundred dollars at Red Lobster. You know, uh, it's the same hundred dollars that you got. You have to make a choice how you're going to spend it, and that causes a lot of people anxiety because they're worried about, you know, not being in a place with those certain folks are not doing certain things. And, and so uh, how do you manage that, Ms. Dyer? If the anxiety should come because you should be able to do both. If you can't do both, that's a problem. But if I can't go out to eat and trade, that's a problem. That means mm -hmm. you have to do something different. You have mm -hmm. to do something mm -hmm. different. You know, if- You're making if, a job to do something different is, is where the anxiety comes from. But that's what I mean. You have to stop living day by day. You have mm -hmm. to understand and recognize that what you've been doing isn't working, you know, and you have to put yourself in a position to really elevate and shift that narrative in your life. You so know, is it is it's not is stopping living day by day? Is it a process or is it something you can do instantaneously? It's, it's it's a decision. I mean, it's a decision. Let me give y'all an example, right? When mm -hmm. something's important to you, you do it. Right. I, I think I um, you know, I was sharing this with someone. My mother used to smoke, right? She smoked. Matter of fact, when when she had, and I'm not saying I wasn't important to her, so let me not say that, but when she was pregnant with me, you know, I, my aunt tells me stories about how my mom sat the ashtray on her stomach, right? That's the things that they did back then, you know, um, and she smoked. And when she got sick, she still smoked, you know? And we had, I would always be like, mom, stop smoking, da, da, da. You know, we would always have those conversations but she smoked. And from my understanding, because I've never smoked anything, but from my understanding, not even the, um, I didn't even eat the weed. Let me put that out there too. But <laughs> from my understanding, that's one of the hardest habits to kick, right? That's one of the hardest things to cut, right? Because of the addiction traits that come with it. But when I had my daughter, my oldest daughter, um, my daughter was a baby and she got sick one day and it had nothing to do with my mom smoking, but she just got sick. My mother threw the cig, got up, threw the cigarettes away, and never smoked again. She cut it cold turkey. And I was like, you know, so it kind of shocked me, right? Because I used to beg her to stop. And I was like trying to get her on all these programs. And, you know, when we were talking, what she told me, she said, you know what? That's my granddaughter. That she more important than a, than a cigarette. And so it's a decision. And when something's important to you, when it's something that you want, when it's something you desire, we'll make excuses all day long. But when you find value in something and when you when you really make a decision that you want to accomplish and achieve something, there is nothing that will get in your way. And so that cut that even cut through the addiction. And I, pro I promise you, she never picked up another cigarette a day in her life. Wow. And so there was some kind of thought pattern that took place that I got to evaluate what's more important, my, mm -hmm. my nicotine or my, or my grandbaby. And so that was something that she and she made a decision, made a choice. She yeah. couldn't chase two rabbits. She couldn't have the grandbaby and the, the nicotine. And so she made that decision. And uh, it was something she wanted to do. Uh, she wanted to do it. All, all prior to that, I'm hearing you say you wanted her to do it. Exactly. And 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 she wanted to do it. And so when people come to the, the mindset that uh, this, this is what I need to do for me, then we'll make that decision. And that eliminates a whole lot of anxiety, wouldn't you think? Absolutely. Mr. Rogers. Yeah, I, I think too, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really, really, even in this scenario that you just made mention of trading or going out to Red Lobster. And so what that makes me understand is it goes back to everything that we talk about, what we find value in, we will always make the, the, the necessary adjustments. And I think one of the things too, though, from a cultural standpoint, and unfortunately, and even from a ministry standpoint, uh, we've made people uh, from a leadership perspective, based on my, my, my synopsis, that we've not made a wealth as a part of the heritage, uh, particularly from a, from a cultural perspective. And people have been shunned uh, tremendously because they've had a desire to accumulate wealth, but I think there's been a lot of misgivings and a lot of misteachings regarding the purpose of it. And when I think about, you know, Deuteronomy 8 and 18, God says that it is I to give you power to obtain wealth. But I think the part of that which we've not articulated uh, in the manner in which it should be is that the covenant may be established. So now we have opportunity to invoke 
and and, and elicit the, the way the kingdom should be ran. And that's a part of things that now, and this is one of the reasons why I believe in so much in the movement and what we're doing, because uh, having the ability to reinvigorate and, and reinstitute the purpose of, of money. And I think you said it earlier, Bishop, money is a tool that, that we should be using it and not us you, uh, being used by it and abused by it or the lack not having it, we end up being abused and we abuse others and it, and it, and it creates uh, a, a, an anxiety in relationships from a marital standpoint, from, a, from a, uh, a legacy standpoint, a community standpoint. So at the end of the day, this is something that we have to continually speak to, speak truth to power so that this misnomer can be erased. And it, it's, it's, it's a tool, but the tool when it's not in the hands of the right people, becomes an abusive tool. And when it's not in the hands of the people who desire it, it becomes a, 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 an extraction from society because we withdraw because we don't have it. So uh, that's where anxiety comes from as well. Wow. And uh, uh, I think that we have a list of things that we will talk about in a few minutes that I call anxious money because you, you mentioned one of them is the lack of is an anxious money. And then that rolls over into other processes. Dr. Byford, yeah. are you out? I'm sorry, sir. Go ahead. I just, think just, that we should add to this process that we need a process. It helps you with anxiety when you have a way to manage what happens to you, to manage how <laughs> you feel about what happens. The Bible is clear when it says, be ye angry, but sin not. So it's saying, you know, it's okay to feel mm -hmm. what you feel. It's okay. I don't know if anybody's ever been playing sports and they got the wind knocked out of you, but you can make all the decisions you want, but you just need a minute. You have to be able to just get back to that point of neutrality before you can move on. So allow yourself to feel what you feel, but just respond in a Christ-like way. Have a process of what you do when you feel what you feel. Because oftentimes what starts anxiety for us is we are so hard on ourselves for feeling what we're feeling. We're attacking ourselves because we're mad because we're mad. But allow yourself to feel it and then sin not. Exactly. Now, uh, in verse 27, it talks about, it says, which of you by being anxious can add one cubic unto the measure of his life. He says, being anxious, that's a state that you can find yourself in where you're just anxious and, and it's like it has a, a, a grip on you or something. And, and, and being in that state is, 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 is not positive. It's, it does nothing but further uh, cause you to sink into a lower state. And so when we talk about being anxious, we need to be considered that we don't want to get in a state where we're just sitting. Can we go? We, the process is we, we make more and more bad decisions. The lack of money uh, causes us to pull out that credit card and pay 20 to 30 percent interest on a few dollars on that lunch that we talked at lunch. We talked about this. Uh, I think those credit cards many times are anxious money because we just putting pain on top of pain. Uh, uh, we, we, I was, okay, I, I want to go out. I want to go out to dinner, uh, and uh, so we just charge this, this dinner on this card, and then we keep doing that, and then we wind up paying this tremendous amount of interest on 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 a hundred dollar dinner, end up costing us one hundred thirty dollars because of the interest, and and so, what does it stop when we find ourselves in that state of anxiety? It's a state. It's not just a minute or a moment. But it's it's a state of anxiety, and that's 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 where it really gets dangerous because we start deciding to use what I call anxious money. I mean, think about it. We we in that cycle right now, Bishop. You talking about food, but what you know? Once you get past October, what do you see start coming up? Christmas lights, Christmas gifts, Christmas commercials. Not one Christmas, not any. My other birthday is coming up. My birthday is coming up. Uh, that's what's coming up, Miss Dad. November, November, uh, the day after Thanksgiving is my birthday. That's coming up. 
That's the Black so, Friday. That, that, that's my birthday. That's uh, what you should be focused <laughs> on as a birthday and not a Black Friday, not a you know Christmas <laughs> gift, not maxing it out, not trying to then think, oh, I just pay it back when I get my taxes. That's that, that's that cycle. And that's so ancient money. Yes, that's that cycle. And so this is why what we're discussing is so important. This is why, you know, go back to that comment. We understood the assignment. This is why, because that has to shift. And a lot of times what happens is people don't know. They don't know that there's another way. They don't know that there's more out there. What I think what Mr. Rogers is alluded to is, is, you know, that we weren't taught wealth. We were not taught these things. So we have to be open. You know, one thing I will say I appreciate my mother for is she would always make sure we understood that this was not our reality. The life we were living was not the reality and that there was more out there and we could achieve it. And so she didn't know how to tell me to achieve it. You know, she was sick. She didn't know how to say, go get it. But she knew the traditional, like, get ready, keep your grades up, go to school. You're going to be successful. You know, those are the things that we heard our entire life. But at the end of the day, you know, that wasn't anything that was going to obtain wealth. And so we have to be able and willing and be open to that shift and to that change. Um, it was very interesting. I had a conversation today and, you know, the, you've been doing a lot of talking lately. Who you been I talking have. to? Yourself? <laughs> no, no, the gentleman, just let me just know, the gentleman I was talking to, you know, one of the things that he mentioned was he wanted to go have a conversation with someone who had information because he values their relationship. But this is, this is what can be dangerous because we'll take advice from people that don't know about what's out there. We'll take advice from people and that'll keep us in those cycles. We'll take advice from people who don't know what's going on, we, that don't, haven't been privy to the information and we will allow them to make decisions for our future and for our life. And that's dangerous. Wow. Mr. Roger, you sound like you wanna do some talking. You was getting on Ms. Dye for talking. Yeah, he wanna um, have a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I, no, I, I think, too, when, when we look at, you know, for me, I, I'm just thinking about, you know, the level of anxiousness that could happen to all of us. If, if for me personally, if I wasn't anchored and rooted uh, in, 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 in God personally, because, uh, man, those voices do get real loud. you right. Yeah. And I know for me over the last two or three weeks, you know, I've been having to go get some extra um, ear earbuds to, to block out the noise because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, 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 and it kind of reminds me of how um, Jesus just demonstrated, you know, even in the midst of the people that he came to save when they when they when they ridiculed him. It, it just I, I just got to go back to what we've been talking about, just being anchored in your purpose. Mm -hmm. uh, the, because it, it 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 does hurt when people mischaracterize you and 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 want to. so that brings on some anxiety as well because all I'm doing is trying to do what God called me to do right I'm just trying to you know be the person that God called me to be in my imperfect self right because there's only one perfect one but so that self talk is very mm -hmm. important and paramount too um, so I got to make sure that I surround myself with, with the right insulation so that when those, mm -hmm. those attacks come, mm -hmm. right, I'm able to, to not be anxious for nothing. Wow, wow, Dr. Byfoot. So this is a radio broadcast, but mm -hmm. as colleagues, I think we should feel free loving on each other. So I would like to mm -hmm. say to my brother, Gerald D. Rogers, here's a way to address anxiety right now. That is shift the perspective. Mm -hmm. It is not an attack. It is someone who is being themselves. Again, if they disappear tomorrow, if you disappear tomorrow, they just be talking about the next person. That's the type of person that goes on a chat and, and says something negative. It's, it's, their, it's empowering themselves. So rather than look at us being attacked, let's just understand who they are. Because there's an African proverb that says, he who angers you conquers you. So every time we call it an attack, we're giving them power. Who attacks? Armies. They have weapons. They have arsenals. This person has nothing. 
They are nothing, but we make them something every time we say it's an attack. Listen to the tape and listen to how many times you said the word attack when in reality, we just want to empower ourselves by knowing who we are. We only have one individual that we care about the analysis and that's God. When we look at it like that, there's no such thing as an attack. I'm sorry, what does the word say? No weapon formed against me shall be prosperous. We can get prosperity right now by realizing it's not a weapon. It's just somebody being themselves. I'm gonna just recommend everybody get a pop it so you can just, you know. Believe what is that? It's like something for Easter, Easter eggs? No, I have no idea. These, these little things that be on the commercials and they just like be pushing a little. I, it's real retarded, but yeah, it's real. It's a long time since I had a six year old, so. <laughs> no, and these is real popular now. They got t shirts, like everything. It's like, I don't know. So yeah, I just say everybody get a pop it and just. Hey. So how much your time cost? <laughs> like two, three, five dollars, depending on where you get them from. Ooh, I should have invented that. Wow. <laughs> It, 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 it's cheaper than a prescription down at the uh it, the, it, oh. the dispensary. So, <laughs> but I say I you know what I just you know the I mean the reality is is we're talking about being anxious, right? So mm -hmm. you said three to twenty five dollars. You say over well, twenty five dollars. Oh my gosh, I'm leaving that there. What? So, what? Somebody put in the chat. Somebody dropped in the chat twenty three to twenty five. I said, oh my, I'm gonna leave that right there. So, but. You know, um, that's what they I, said. The dispensary. That's what they're saying. <laughs> so I'm, a, um, no, I just, I mean, this is with the territory, and I think that's what we're trying to address. It, you know, not not a personal feeling or anything mm -hmm. like that. It just comes with the territory because when you're called, when you're walking in your calling, right? Oh. Is is, and I, mm -hmm. I'll I'll go back to like when I was younger. And everybody always told me, and this is before people told me about having a relationship with God, you know, mm -hmm. they would always say, when you're walking with God, you're going to get attacked. You're going to get, you know, and we hear that so much, but when you have the relationship, it's all about how you manage those things. It's all about how you manage it. And that's what I think we're trying to get across today is the management of that, because we're doing a great thing. We're shifting mentalities. We're we're shifting cultures. We're shifting people's lives, right? We're, we're changing narratives. We're changing communities. That's what's happening. And so, does it always feel good? Absolutely not. Does it require you to put in some work and some sleepless nights? Absolutely. You know. So all of these things happen. But at the end of the day, when somebody sends you a testimony or somebody says, "Hey," you know, thank you so much. Or I get these long dissertations about what's changed in their lives and how grateful they are for the movement, you know, and, and, you know, from being there when people's parents passed and this is what gave them solace. And, you know, this is really what helped them push through, you know, or they thank us so much for what we're doing, you know, so we know we're walking in our calling. We know we're mm -hmm. walking in what God called us to do. And we know like people, when they able to walk off their jobs or they're able to make decisions for their families and their lives and their children now start having different conversations, but the kind, but see what most people don't understand if you're living day to day is how to manage that. How do I change that? Why am I so anxious? Why am I putting my child on medication instead of teaching them another way to shift that? Why are we doing these things? Why are we going and we're living in depression and not able to make decisions that we're greater and we can vibrate higher? Why are we doing that? And so the reference is we get attacked. The reference is it comes for us that, you know, we, we go through it and people don't realize we go through too. We're the same people like all of you are. We're people too. But the reality is we know what we're doing. And Jesus got attacked. I mean, he left Nazareth. He didn't stay home. He left. He, you know, he went where people received him and he did, you know. So if that's the case and that's what's going on, people are receiving us. They're receiving us in other countries. They're receiving us around the world. Right? We have an impact in the United Kingdom and Africa and, and you know, just everywhere. You know, it's like, so if we're having impact globally we're going to get attacked because why would there not be an attack if people have been under bondage and chained? Why would it not be there? There's an expectation for it to be there. But guess what? Somebody's got to make a shift. Somebody's got to make a change and somebody's got to be willing to go to battle because it is a battle and I'm, and I'm ready for it. 
Now, uh, Mr. Rogers, if you notice in this passage that uh, uh, Jesus kind of shifts and says, why are you anxious when you consider uh, what you're going to wear? And it moves on down and says, God provides clothing for the lilies of the field, et cetera, et cetera. And so the scene of Jesus seems seem to bring the focus around and say, we are, we are anxious because we're trying to do what God is trying to handle up. God's responsibility. God says certain things are his responsibility. I'm breaking up. You're back now. Testing one, two, three. That's, that's the enemy. Yeah. Me. The enemy didn't want me to say that, but <laughs> I'm back. Yeah. So he's saying now God has a responsibility to provide certain things. And we have a certain role that we're supposed to play in submission to God's will. And sometimes anxiety comes about because God's not doing it quick enough or God not doing it the way we think it ought to have been done. And so we try to take over for God and do it ourselves. And so we have to let God be God and God do what he's supposed to do in our life. What do you think, Mr. Rogers? Uh, absolutely. And then, and you know, this is, this is great because this, this is uh, introspection as well. And then you, you are absolutely right. Sometimes we do try to, play the role of God in the lives of people and that's not our responsibility. So I'm right. so glad you brought that point out because, uh, you know, that, that one kind of hit me in the chest. So I'm going I'm to eat that one myself and realize that guess what? <laughs> I ain't God. I'm just supposed to be playing <laughs> a, a role in this process and not try to be the process. So well, remember, absolutely. God gave you a vision. Yeah. Absolutely. God gave you a vision to run with. God gave me a a, uh, a uh, process by which we operate uh, on, on the platform. And so uh, um, we let God be God, God assigns us roles and we, we, we follow that. We not, you know I mean, it's, it's up to God now. He, if he doesn't choose the color, we, we want to wear red and he said, we're gonna wear blue today, then that's when we get anxious. I don't look good in red, you know? And so he's gonna wear BYOB. That's how he's gonna wear it. It's BYOB. <laughs> no. That's right. That's right. <laughs> my my uniform. My okay. uniform. That's that's what a guy asked me. Hey man, I like your uniform. I say, you do? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm in uniform. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but Dr. Bikewood. You Dr. know, Dr. still there. Um, yes, I still am, sir. There's a technique yes, I use with my children when they are uh, being talked about by people. The first thing I do is I put them in the car and I take them to the grocery store and I show them the National Enquirer. And I remind them that only the beautiful people get on the cover of this magazine. Only the beautiful people are the ones that get talked about. Only the strong, only the successful, only those that are doing good and are good or being good are the ones they get talked about. So it just provides a, a new perspective. But something else I share with them is this. I make them take the person that is saying what they're saying and say, person, I bless you with pure love and light. Oh, that first time is challenging. But by the time they bless that person with pure love and light, that 13, 14, 15 time, suddenly they feel better. The Bible says, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. It doesn't say, oh, I'm mad because they did it. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. So sometimes the way in which we manage the anxiety of situations like this is to bless that person rather than curse them for what they did or said. Absolutely, Dr. Bywood. I think uh, that's certainly a key to eliminating anxiety because some people that you are angry with and have not forgiven, their very presence, the very mention of their name creates an anxious moment for uh, individuals. And so forgiveness is, is important. It plays a major role. Would you agree with that, Ms. Dyer? Oh, absolutely. Um, I've, I, don't, I walk in positivity. You know, I walk in forgiveness. Um, and there was only one time in my entire life that it was hard for me to forgive anybody. And I watched God work through my life. And if you read our book, the Women Teach Forex chapter, you'll understand why, all right? So yes, go get it. Be your own bank hidden in plain sight. I'm not going to leave the clues. You need to go pick up the book. But it had to do with my children, right? So it really it had to do with my children. And so outside of that, you 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 can't phase me because 
I know where I'm going. I know what I'm called to, right? I know that. And see, that's that goes back to the point that I open this up with. If you don't understand what your purpose is in life, if you don't understand what your vision is, if you don't understand what you're supposed to be doing, then you get distracted. And those are nothing but distractions. So if, if a distraction comes, if, if you're not in a path and on the same vibration as I am to where I'm going, you know, does it always feel good? Absolutely not. But sometimes the pruning has to happen. And when the pruning happens, I'm okay with it because I can shake it off and keep going. If people don't bother me. I know what I know what I'm called to. And I know what's going to manifest because I know I'm focused on what God has called me to. It's all about what God has called me to and not other people. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mr. Mr. Rogers, uh, we got five minutes left. So uh, 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 make it succinct and, and positive and powerful. And then we'll uh, uh, Dr. Byford to do the same. And then Ms. Dyer will, uh, will close us out with how people can contact us and be a part of what we do. The, the confidence is knowing is that what if we apply and we just simply show up and do our part, then that's what you know, the remainder of the story lets us know, uh, you know, we're going to do our portion, allow God to be God. Mm -hmm. And then the result is because he's benevolent in his, all of his giving, then there's nothing that he will withhold from us if we're focused and purpose on doing what he's called us to do. And that's kind of why we are so adamant and why we know that this movement is, is paramount because we're having impact not only from a financial perspective, but we're having people really understand and come into a totality who, who they are as, as the individual and helping them understand that it is okay to have desires and, and, and put yourself in a position where you can truly be a blessing. Because that's really, when you think about from a biblical perspective, uh, the purpose of you and I having wealth is really to be a blessing to other people. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that blessing could be uh, financial information, or it could be actually finances, but just the totality of being a whole person. And when we're a whole and complete person, then we are really able to be a blessing to other individuals. So that's the most important thing on how and why we understand the end result. And because of that, this vehicle, this, this movement is once again, and for our listeners, this is not about the individuals who are here. We're just the, the vessel at this time because if, if it's perpetual, if, if it's of God and we believe it is, then some of you that are listening, then at in some point you will be speaking to a, a different ears and different audiences because that we're raising up people to continue the work. Amen. Can okay. I say something okay. before we close out? You know, just kind well, of- We're going to give you, give you the last word. Right. No, 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 no. This is not about that. I want to, it's about what Mr. Rogers just said. If you go back to what um, I mentioned a few weeks ago about what a pastor said, you know, and, and thinking about that, um, you know, listening to one of the pastors, the last time I give him credit for it, you know, this is that scripture that he was referring to. And, you know, we're here to give you the information. We're here to pay it forward. But even when he talks about the, the, the birds are not worried about what they're going to eat, but they still got to get up and go get the worm. The worm doesn't just drop in their mouth. And so, you know, that's, you know, just thinking about what he just mentioned, you know, and what's out there, we have to understand that we have to get up and we still got to do the work, you know, even though God is going to provide, because I want to shift that narrative for so many people, because we always say, oh, I'm just waiting on God. I'm waiting on God. I'm waiting on God. Yes, we're waiting on God. But at the same time, God is going to give it to you and you have to get up and you have to do the work. You know, it's not just going to fall in your lap. You have to get up and you have to put in the work. Dr. Byford. We have the perfect role model for this situation. He was known all over the world and we're still talking about him 2,021 years later. But the place where he had the least amount of respect, Nazareth, because that's where he was from. A prophet is never a prophet in their own homeland. Absolutely. Now, Ms. Dyer, you can close us out uh, with the information that people need to contact. Absolutely, absolutely. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm excited because this is the opportunity for you to take advantage, that entire shift of mindset, that entire shift of the narrative, and really the opportunity for you to really take advantage and become your own bank. And so how do you get in touch with us? I'm telling you, you want to show up tonight, you want to show up, but go ahead and grab your phone, pick up your phone right now and text BYOB to 55469. 
right? Text BYOB to 55469, right? You want to make sure that you do that. Text BYOB to 55469. Also, go to our YouTube channel, okay? Go on YouTube and search Be Your Own Bank Movement. Not BYOB. I need you to search Be Your Own Bank Movement and go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And we'll be streaming tonight at 9 p.m. Yes, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And you can definitely dive in and understand what this movement is all about. And make sure you send that text, text BYOB to 55469. We love each and every last one of you all. We will definitely see you back here next week, but I'm going to see you tonight because you're going to chime in and understand exactly what this movement is about. Two million families financially educated and impacted, and let's go spread this message throughout the world. Let's change lives. Two million families financially educated and impacted, and I'm telling you, it begins with you. Love you all. See you tonight and back on here next week. All right, guys. Love you. Bye-bye.